Operation Truth, the show they don't want you to see. Now, here's your host, Lou. Hello, everyone. My name is Lou. I'd like you to call me Lou just to keep this nice and informal. Um, as usual, things are going to hell in a handbasket in this country. If you've followed what went on uh, over the weekend in Baltimore, 30 people were shot. And we have some rather interesting individual detonating devices throughout Washington, D.C. And, and I wish I could tell you this is an anomaly. It is not. These, this is our new norm, you know, and, and I ha hate to say this to you, but it's tied to a political environment. And I want to also preface this, this podcast by saying to you, A, we're not contentious. We're not going to point the finger. We're going to point out deficiencies, but we're going to offer you solutions. We're not going to insult anyone. You know, to be honest with you, that seems to be the the manner in which we operate in the media today, whether it's the 24-hour news cycle or even some of those in the ABC, NBC, CBS world. This is about problem solving. Yeah. It's really about our children. So um, understand the focus of what we're doing here. I, I do want to mention something, too, which is a bit of irony. Um, since this Hunter Biden deal that was made with him falsifying a federal firearms form, number 4473, in which it is a felony with a 10-year prison sentence attached. We've not heard a word about gun control. But even if they did, I do want to bring something to your attention, which is a, a bit, I would say, ironic, hypocritical. Go in and Google how many people die every year from cigarette smoking. 480,000, approximately 41,000 uh, die from secondhand smoke. Where's the concern of the outrage? Now, we do have a considerable number of people that die from gun violence, about 42,000. And we're not going to underscore the significance of that number. You know, but the reality of it is we have something working at a considerably quicker pace and get, getting rid of Americans, but it doesn't seem to bother us. I, I want to say something about this Adam Schiff censor also. Um, he did what he did. Tom Fuentes can probably speak to that since he's so knowledgeable about this probe, this Russian probe. But the thing I found interesting, and I'm going to apologize to everyone because I'm going to repeat almost verbatim what Tlaib, Congresswoman Tlaib said, I believe it was the first day that um, Donald Trump was elected. She stated, I'm going to impeach that motherfucker. Interesting. This is the this is the language of our elected officials that our children are listening to. This is the conduct you're allowed to get away with. No censorship, no outrage. Tlaib and Omar both have spewed anti-Semitism. Where's Chuck Schumer, who's Jewish? Bernie Sanders, who's Jewish? Adam Schiff, Nadler, all Jewish. Where's the outrage? You know, the problem is, guys, and I want everybody to understand something about this platform. I'm not speaking to you as a Republican or a Democrat. I'm speaking to you first and foremost as a parent because I'm gravely concerned for the future of my children and all the young people that are strolling around this country being blindly dead, led down a road that I see no light at the end of this tunnel. So we need one set of rules universally applied, regardless of who it is. If you cross a certain threshold that lends itself, say, to criminality, you need to be addressed accordingly. We seem to have uh, one party that any time an individual in their, their party or a group do something that's egregious or completely off base, we somehow, ra somehow rationalize it's okay. Oh, we have the other party doing the same thing, by the way. <clears throat> I do want to just gloss over something about this issue about school loan forgiveness. It is so dishonest for the president to continue this campaign about we're going to forgive the student loans. It leads these children to think that something's being done that is wrong. Here's the problem. And you can go and review Nancy Pelosi. I'm not here to spoon feed you also, guys. I'm here to give you something to think about. I don't want you to vote based on what I think. I don't want you to even generate an opinion necessarily based on what I think. I want you to hear what I have to say and go out and delve into it a little deeper. But this whole routine about student loan forgiveness is not within his purview. He acknowledged it, ironically. Nancy Pelosi acknowledged it. A number of people in the Congress have acknowledged it. It's not within his reach. Why are you continuing to divide, to divide and polarize our children and, and prop them up against us. What What's the good that comes out of this? Are you so desperate to get reelected that you would poison and intentionally mislead our children? And I have to be honest with you. If it was a Republican, I'd be saying the same thing. So don't think that this is politically driven. Just simply not the case. This show is not driven. We're just going to tell you the truth. So without further ado, I want to bring in Christian Briggs, 
Christian, I just can say he's the guy's brilliant when it comes to math. I think he forgot more about math and, and economics than I probably ever knew. But I want to bring Christian in because a July 1st date has passed, and I want to get an update from Christian. Um, I also would like him to explain um, prerogatives we may have in addressing this transition to digital currency. So, Christian, are you there with me, sir? I'm right here, Lou. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us today. Christian, update, please, as of, of uh, July 1. What are we hearing? Okay, so last week, a uh, week ago today, Congressman Mark Green, uh, District Number 7 of Tennessee, myself, and Ms. Mandy Gutasegura, who was formerly with the Trump administration as the Chief of Staff and Deputy Director of the EPA, we were at a symposium uh, there in D.C., as you know, with Freedom Works, and we made it very clear that the central bank digital currency is out and about. Having met with some people within the banking community, they made it very clear that the Fed now, which launched today in theory, uh, is a direct competitor to commercial banking in this in this country. So if Fed now is a direct competitor to commercial banking, the question you have to ask yourself, why would any bank sign up to have Fed now be the service provider for pretty much all ancillary banking requirements, needs? for their customers. And the fact is some of the small to medium community banks are not in a position to be able to take full advantage of some of those services internally. They don't have the wherewithal. They don't have the technical technology built. They don't have the technical aspects of it. So Fed now is coming in as a Trojan horse to be able to provide these services to their banking customers. Now, let me tell you exactly what they get for that. So if you're a local bank, a community bank or credit union that is determined that the Fed now offers services that can help your customers, okay, services that can, that can help your customers, you then sign up. Go. You can clearly see that thing looks just like Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo. It looks like any other bank out there. And here's what we verified. One, Fed now is absolutely a competitor to commercial banks. Two, all transactions history. All transactions, and I mean everything under the sun, that history is recorded and reported and stored in a database on the customer. Their unique account number at the community or any bank that signs up for FedNow is also recorded. All information is now tied to from your local bank to the Federal Reserve Bank, which is Big Brother, all the way. Now, so see, let, let me interrupt you, Christian, if, yeah, I, if sure. I may, because this is something that we need to revisit that you spoke to. In an earlier show, we need to remind the average citizen what this will translate to when we get through this whole transition, if you would. Okay. So, again, it goes back to that same theory of chaos. <clears throat> Whatever happens is inevitable. What happened today is the Fed now is a website, very clear. Clearly, you can go to it. Look up Fed now. You can then determine. And they even promoted, Lou, as such a way to call your local bank to tell them to sign up for Fed now. They're promoting it to the small and medium businesses. So that's a direct relationship between the Federal Reserve Bank and the consumer and okay, a commercial consumer. Remember, that's not a retail consumer when you have a commercial account. As defined by banking, that is a commercial account. So you have commercial banking to banking, but a commercial account stakeholder. Now. Once that bank signs up for Fed now, all the information is then transferred and sits on the Fed now servers. We have asked people within the banking community, Congressman Green and I both had meetings. What we were told was they said that the Fed now said that they don't get the exact name on the account. And when we asked, are you sure? They said, no, we can't guarantee that. But that's what we're being led to believe. So for now, we're going to say, okay, maybe that is the case. But here's what they do get. Every single transaction, I don't care if it's a credit card, a wire, a deposit, a withdrawal of any nature, but they also get the account number. Once you have the account number, you really don't need a name because the name is already part of it. You can easily identify what that name is on that account. So here we go. The Federal Reserve has now gone into the private banking community and they're now talking and working and transacting for private individuals, commercial accounts, mind you. So when we did the presentation last week, which was a blow away hit, we had thousands and thousands of people on Facebook worldwide watching. And we had a lot of people there live in the audience. What we realized then was the Federal Reserve 
is going to transition. Their goal is to get as many accounts in that small, medium, or even higher end commercial banking community of, of accounts, or commercial accounts, to transition to their platform. Once they have that, okay, once they have that, they will not need to then have the community banks any further. Think Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell made a comment to Congress and to a, a committee. It says, we feel confident we don't need Congress's approval to issue some type of a digital dollar, central bank digital currency, call it what you will, for commercial banking. And my brothers and sisters out there, I think that's what they just did. They did not need Congress's approval. What they did was they went around, circumvented Congress, came out with Fed now, commercial banking, not retail banking. This is not retail banking, not a retail named account. So basically what we're seeing now, July 1st, we're seeing the Fed now launched in that, in that direct commercial banking, bank to bank commercial use. That's how they can derp Congress, as I said earlier. What's interesting of the way, the context of the verbiage on the website, it makes it look like this is a regular bank. Anybody can sign up, but bank to bank to be able to integrate the small to medium bank and even like earlier large banks. So all the consumers then go on Fed and House platform. Ultimately, within the next 12 months, those consumers continue to transact through the Fed now portal or Fed platform. Eventually, you don't need the banks that had brought the accounts there. All the customers now are on the Federal <clears throat> Reserve's website, right, which is their platform. You're integrating into their service service side. Christian, I apologize, buddy. We, we cut you there because the transmission quality was, um, I would say, less than there we go. receptible. Are, are you there, bud? Yeah, I'm right here, bud. Okay. We're going to go to a quick break, guys. We're going to come right back to you. This is Operation Truth. We're going to have, give you a real departure from what you're listening to today. We're going to be right back, guys. The world is in crisis, with political unrest and financially unstable countries trying to print their way to prosperity by taking on trillions of dollars of new debt. It's incredibly concerning. That's why you need to own silver as a hedge. So call today to receive the free hard asset information kit on how easy it is to own silver. Green energy demands will possibly turbocharge silver prices to 50, 100, even 300 an ounce, according to many experts around the world. Silver is a proven hedge against inflation. Since 1971, silver has returned over 11% to an average yearly. Silver is a proven wealth preservation for hundreds of years. Hard Asset Management is a trusted leader in precious metals and rare coins for nearly 40 years. We have the guaranteed lowest prices, fast and easy ordering, expedited shipping, with award-winning customer service available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. CST, Monday through Friday. So protect yourself from the chaos. Invest in stability with Hard Asset Management. Call now and get your free Hard Asset Management information kit on how easy it is for you to own silver. 844-426-4653. 844-426-4653. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. And I we still have Christian Briggs with us. We did a little technical adjustment here. So I'd like you to continue with what you were saying, Christian. Sure. So what we're basically looking at is the difference between a retail and a commercial account. Let me make sure we're very clear on that. Back in March, like I said, when Jerome Powell was addressing members of Congress and a committee, he said, point blank, the Federal Reserve Bank doesn't believe it needs the authority or approval of Congress to issue a commercial, commercial, general, I call it, I call it a generation of new currency, because this is like something we've never seen before. It's, it, they're trying to redefine money. That's how they're trying to get it past the states here recent, in recent months. And we call it central bank digital currency. Very simple. It's easier to call it CBDC because really, in, in all terms, that's what it is. Now, he made it clear that they don't need Congress's approval so they can usurp the authority of Congress, which clearly has the uh, ultimate authority to issue any type of money. So what they did was with Fed now, they redefined commercial and retail. Lou, you and I have a retail account. If it's under our personal name, that's basically a retail account. If we have a business, that's a commercial account. So what did they do? They took Fed now and then they marketed directly to what? Commercial banks. Banks that are defined as generally working and lending or, or giving credit facilities to businesses. I don't care whether it's two people 
or two million at that business. So, it's a commercial. Chris, so let account. me ask you this then: Is this are, are you stating that this is like the first phase, so to speak? Because I'm trying to hang with you on this one, big guy. This is the first phase of this transition into digital currency that will later translate to us as individuals. Is that where we're going here? No question. No question about it. No question. Let me. And what give about you a timeline? Stats. And give me a timeline. There are thirty. If you can. This is a timeline. Okay, so let me tell you what it means, Lou, in timeline. So there's 32.5 million businesses in the United States today. That represents, and this is small businesses, all right, make it very clear. The percentage that those small businesses represent of all businesses in the United States is 99.9%. Small businesses represent 99.9%. Those are commercial accounts. So when you take and factor in that many people that have that many small businesses, which would you rather go after, the 0.01% or the 99.9% if you're doing the Fed now? So they went after the commercial accounts. Now, the timeline is very simple and very clear. In order to be able to issue a product, you must have adoption of customers on your platform. Then you can give them the dog food. So at the end of the day, what they're going to do in order to get consumption, they've got to get operational accounts on it so take the next 12 to 18 months migrate all the accounts that are commercial over to the fed now's platform then all of a sudden you don't need the intermediate banks anymore that are under commercial credit lendings they all of a sudden have the accounts now token generation is very simple you just start depositing digital tokens in lieu of currency or what i would consider to be the old paper dollars now these digital credits are what trackable individually serialized they usurped Congress because it's a commercial account, commercial bank to bank. The banks will start integrating these tokens probably in the next six to 12 months. Consumers, still considered to be commercial accounts, will integrate those as payment systems. And then 18 months later, you've got central bank digital currency to where 99.9% .9 of the businesses out there are small businesses, which represents the vast majority of all, customers, all people within the country. That's your customer base. It's so what, what will the consumer what will the consumer have to do in order to conduct business with these commercial accounts that have been transitioned? How we do they're business already, with they're them? They're already Lou, they're already conducting transactions with commercial. They have commercial banking, checking accounts, credit cards, lines of credit, SBA. Is that considered it, digital? Is that considered digital when you use credit card? Yeah. Any I don't think should... it's the digital de definition that we're talking about here. Definition, what I'm talking about is the individual dollars. In other words, transitioning from a dollar of paper, even though, yes, it's digital in the credit system, it's not serialized quite like what we're talking. Did Tokens will be serialized, have ser individual unique serial numbers that will be uniquely identifiable by that, which then those would be digital dollars because like a paper dollar has a serial number. We're not at the digital serial number yet, even though my... My sources tell me that's already been created, that there are trillions of these generatable tokens that are individually serial numbered, ready to go and be deployed, but they're not ready for deployment because they have no accounts to deposit them in yet until they transition accounts from the commercial banks into the Fed now. So is the dollar going to disappear? No, it's just going to be transitioning into a digital serialized token. And what, and what about its value? Will it maintain its value? No way. How can it? Unless it's backed and backed by gold. So over the weekend, there was a huge article on the digital yuan and how fast it's gaining in not only China, but it's propagating beyond China's borders, slowly but surely through the BRICS membership. So BRICS being the group of countries that have determined that they are no longer going to be working with the U.S. on its economic policies and using dollars, but rather it's going to be utilizing China's economic supremacy in their in their minds and their eyes and thus using the digital yuan and then there was another follow-up article which said clearly that the digital yuan which is by a portion not not all of it yet but a portion of it is backed by gold see yesterday i was in, uh, talking to some people and members of congress and their staff and i made it very clear and i said this i said as it continues to get adoption the digital yuan gets adoption and they consume it within commerce, whether it's India, Brazil, Russia, Afghanistan, Pakistan. These are countries, Iran, Saudi Arabia. What they'll do is 
they'll continue to proliferate this thing beyond the borders of China. China, since 2010, has been dumping treasuries. Now, they had $4 trillion in in reserve treasuries around 2010, 2012, within that time period. Today, it's estimated they have less than $600 billion in treasuries. All of the money of which they've sold, they put into gold. Why? Because now gold is back in the digital yuan. See, you don't need treasuries when gold becomes your reserve currency. The reserve currency for China now is the digital yuan and the gold that supports it. And as they continue to sell treasuries, and by spring of next year, by our own estimates, we've determined that that there'll be little or no treasuries. If there is some, it's going to be very minimal in China's reserve currencies because gold is their new currency, especially when it's supporting and backing the digital yuan, their central bank digital currency, the yuan. So as this thing continues to go out and be more and more used around the world, what you're going to experience is the lesson the lessing of the dollar being used every day down below 40%, 30%. This is going to have a huge detrimental effect on treasury values. Interest rates will continue to rise. Our debt cannot roll over at low rates. And by 2025, I have been writing some theories where my outcomes and conclusions show at the rate we're going, we may not even have a paper dollar much longer than 26 we might not even have a digital dollar or paper dollar that has any real meaning of value because if we can't continue to roll over our debt at lower rates because we're not the reserve currency, we're going to have, I wouldn't say Venezuela numbers, but 15 to 20% interest rates might be the new norm. That's what's scary. Mortgages might I be to at 12%. This, and that's where I wanted to go in this conversation so people could ultimately understand what this will translate to. Uh, Christian, I've got to wrap with you, but I do want uh, you to tell people how they can find you before we go. Sure. Let me tell you something about this. With all the central bank digital currencies coming out, listen to this. 49, we verified this over the weekend. 49 countries are in final or late stage development of issuing a central bank digital currency. Every one of those countries has indicated that they support gold as back in their own CBDCs. If this happens, and I hope it doesn't, but if it does, we're in the gold business. Gold will skyrocket by de- by default because they've got to start buying the gold in the open market, and then they've got to use it as a backstop to their own digital currencies to bring credibility and use. So either way, we're going to make a fortune in, as gold buyers and gold investors, and especially as it continues to proliferate again around the world, not just in usage, but in the number of countries that are now clearly using <laughs> a digital currency to monetize their own uh, monetary platforms. Guys, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to wrap this up, this segment up. As you can see, it can go on and on, and Christian will be back. Um, We're going to take a quick break. Just stay with us. The world is in crisis, with political unrest and financially unstable countries trying to print their way to prosperity by taking on trillions of dollars of new debt. It's incredibly concerning. That's why you need to own silver as a hedge. So call today to receive the free hard asset information kit on how easy it is to own silver. Green energy demands will possibly turbocharge silver prices to 50, 100, even 300 an ounce according to many experts around the world. Silver is a proven hedge against inflation. Since 1971, silver has returned over 11% when averaged yearly. Silver is a proven wealth preservation for hundreds of years. Hard Asset Management is a trusted leader in precious metals and rare coins for nearly 40 years. We have the guaranteed lowest prices, fast and easy ordering, expedited shipping, with award-winning customer service available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. CST, Monday through Friday. So protect yourself from the chaos. Invest in stability with Hard Asset Management. Call now and get your free Hard Asset Management information kit on how easy it is for you to own silver. 844-426-4653. 844-426-4653. Back, ladies and gentlemen. And um, before we end with Christian, I would like Christian to afford us uh, the opportunity to understand how we can find him. Christian, if you would be so kind. All right, Luke. Thank you. So you can find us at Hard Asset Management. Our website is B-M-C-H-A-M. That's Bravo Mary Charlie Ham.com. And we are available. You can our toll-free number is right there, the 844 number. Feel free to call us. There's also you can call, you can go out, do info at bmcham.com for any information. Download uh, if it's free our, our offerings or you know what we offer. And, and make it very clear. We are not 
advocating for a CBDC. In fact, it's detrimental. It is bad for society. It is surveillance control containment. However, to stop it is a very big challenge at this point with so many countries going. If you don't own precious metals and rare coins and take advantage of something that is more than likely inevitable, you are going to see your wealth decrease by by the fact that interest rates are going to stay high for a long time. Inflation is not going away. And gold could become one of the most, I would say, the most precious metals. Christian, we've got a cut oh. for today, and I'm going to bring okay. in Tom Fuentes in one second. We're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to bring Tom right back. Christian, okay. thank you so much, buddy. Yep, I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Hard Asset Management is a trusted leader in precious metals and rare coins for nearly 40 years. We have the guaranteed lowest prices, fast and easy ordering, expedited shipping, with award-winning customer service available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. CST, Monday through Friday. So protect yourself from the chaos. Invest in stability with Hard Asset Management. Call now and get your free Hard Asset Management information kit on how easy it is for you to own silver. 844-426-4653. 844-426-4653. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we're going to bring on Tom Fuentes just to remind you who Tom is. He's a former assistant director of the FBI with a rather impressive career, which included but, but was not limited to coordinating the international operation of the FBI. I believe Tom mentioned it was 80 cities and its agents. And that's just a, a, a scratch at what he's done with the FBI and protecting this country. And um, as we all know, the FBI is having some issues today. I want to bring Tom on and I want to ask Tom, uh, give me your impression as to uh, what Christian just divulged. Tom, you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Luke. What Christian is basically saying is that, uh, you know, this train has left the station. The, the issue of Fed now, the takeover uh, by the Federal Reserve of the banking system so that no longer in the future will you have commercial banks in between the customer and the Federal Reserve, the U.S. government. So that'll eliminate banking privacy and a number of issues like that. You'll be banking with the federal government. And the government will know what you're doing how you're doing it, and whether they're going to allow you to do it when it comes to transferring assets from one, you know, one fund to another. So, so this is coming. I think, as Christian's mentioning, it's already happened. Much of it's happened, and it just seems like uh, there's not much effort to slow it down. Individual states are trying to say they don't want central bank digital currency. They don't want to go to this kind of system. But the question is going to be, are they just going to be forced into it? Are, the, are the, the smaller banks just going to be absorbed, let's say, into the federal system? And you would provide a very insightful explanation as to where we're ultimately going with this thing, Tom. Guys, I just want to give you a quick summation of this uh, discussion with Christian Briggs. There's something going on that most of us in America, just so we understand the landscape, we're too busy taking care of our children feeding them, clothing them, getting them educated, making sure they have some balance and normality in their life, but try to keep track of these issues of transitioning into digital currency and what the ultimate impact would be. I encourage you to please look into Christian, start to wrap your arms around where we're going with this issue, because it could be one that you're going to, you're going to Tom, you're going to find out as Tom Fuente so cleverly pointed out, it's going to be invasive. It's going to be controlling. You have to pay attention to what's going on in the country. I know you're distracted. I realize that everybody's capitalizing on that when they start to pull their little exploits. This is another one. No one's following this bouncing ball. Christian is. Tom is. I'm trying. Let me be honest with you. It's not my in my wheelhouse, guys. I'm, I'm not the sharpest tool in the world when it comes to finance and economics. I defer to experts. You know, I have my own wheelhouse. But I would tell you, keep your eyes open. See the forest for the trees. See you next week, guys.